the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that one day down the time of uh, the line of time, that we will produce scientists who will be able, are you ready for this? Yes. To make a new sun, yes. S-U-N, yes. and make a whole new galaxy yes. outside of the galaxy of the Milky Way galaxy yes. of stars. You never read in any of the magazines and the newspapers when they're reporting on Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam or those black Muslims or Brother uh, Farrakhan. Uh, always what do they print? Negativity. You know why? That's their nature. They cannot help it. They were born on the bad side. We have to say. <laughs> They're like the dark side of the moon that wants to keep hiding its backside. <laughs> never coming out with the truth. He does not have it in him because his father, who came up with this idea, all right, of producing that which was giving us trouble, cannot teach the truth. They mix the truth with falsehood, lies, deception. So that when you see it, you say, hmm, that sounds like it's right. But it really is from a vibratory low uh, expression. Yes. And trick, that's right. Trick not. Some people here, come on up here and teach, brother. <laughs> so as we continue this study, this is a course of study that we have entered into the mosque. We are not supposed to be so emotional with our teaching that all we do is say things off the cup without some real, very serious research, okay? And so as we evolve and as we grow with the guidance of our spiritual guides and through the guidance of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, we will be more and more evolutionary in what we have to say. We will be right in tune with what the scientists are discovering and bringing into view as evidence that is proving the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, I did say we were going to read this first verse. Yes, ma'am. And if I read this first verse, then we're going to take from there another look an examination of our subject. Yes. Al-Fatir, the originator. Yes, In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Praise be to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the maker of the angels, messengers flying on wings two and three and four, he increases in creation what he pleases. Surely, Allah is possessor of power over all things. Now, what might be the thoughts that come to your mind about these winged creatures or these winged messengers or these winged angels that are flying? Think about that two, three, and four. Some of the interpretation states, perhaps they don't know, that these two, three, four may be referring to prayer. And because in the traditional form of prayer, when we're doing salat, there are two, three, and four rakas. And when you say your prayers diligently and invoke the name of Allah, he takes you on wings, mental, spiritual wings, so that you are in flight and you literally can travel. They call it astral traveling or out of the body. And some of us here have had that experience where you're lifted up from the plane of your material being, and you literally are flying 
from one part of the planet or universe to another. And then when we get back, we're amazed. But if you start talking like that <laughs> to your neighbor <laughs> or even to your family members, they're going to think you're going off the track and you must be a space being <laughs> until they have the same experience. So what is that all about? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad answered a part of this through his teachings. He said, angels, which is the other side of this uh, study, are human beings. They are identified even as messengers. So when you see a messenger, you are also seeing an angel that was appointed by God to take the people to another level. From material to spiritual, you see? So that with your mind, you have all of the self-empowerment equipment that talks back to the body. So in your brain, you have a hookup system electrically and mechanically uh, devised that connects to every part of the body and it produces its voluntary or involuntary movement to keep this vessel alive. Is that right? Yes. Once you're brain dead, you're gone unless you have made preparation for your exodus <laughs> at the time that they say you are pronounced dead. And those persons who have mastered that kind of preparation are generally called masters, am I right? Yes. And they are called in some spiritual schools of thought, ascended masters. Then you go on to another level and they say that on that level, you, if you survive, that you can communicate with other human beings. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'm telling you, I'm going to speak science and you can challenge me. He said, the physical body that we see will decay. Go back into the earth and we've never read anything in our history that says that once you go to the grave, that you can return. That's right. We teach it all wrong in the theologies of various religions. They say there is a life after death. There is a life after death, but we bring it into reality. He said that if there are any angels flying around with wings, they are the righteous minds that are affecting change upon other human beings. And he said, just as a proof, thought never dies. So we have to ask, well, where does this thought go? Is it engendered back into flesh? Because I don't know any zone out there that's talking back and forth to itself and then we're picking it up and hearing all of these voices <laughs> that are being produced by thoughts in some ethereal plane. But you know, you've heard of psychics, people who can literally see into the future. They are visionaries. They are seers. What are they doing that with? What part of the body? The mind. They're able to tap in to your thinking. We call it telepathy. We call it tuning in. So the ability of the mind over matter is real. And if you take an atom and reduce it to its fundamental parts, it turns into negative and positive electricity. And everything about material things are made up of atoms. Everything. Now we used to think that the atom was the smallest part. But now science is saying that the material within the atom can be divided and you find more and more little parts. And these little parts are frequencies that come from a living universe. And these particles now are going into what they call quantum, quantum mechanics, where Einstein left off 
with this theory, mm -hmm, E equals MC squared. So if E equals MC squared, that is talking about the velo velocity of light, which is in every single atom. And that atom produces then a friction. And if it's used wisely, we can harness energy from the atom, which is a big discussion today, for energy, for peace, for all of the positive things. But in the hands of the wrong man, it is used for destruction. And that's what we're looking at today. The controversy over nuclear plants and nuclear uh, facilities, the capability of producing a bomb. That is not in the mind of the original people, at least at the moment. But it has been demonstrated that the Western powers, all they do is study how they can make something out of steel to kill somebody. And that goes back to about 6,600 years. Yeah. Yes. in the past. So when you read your Bible, it contains mm, the King James Version, not the Catholic Bible, but the one that we read contains how many books? 66. 66. So as we use in our teaching from the Master mathematics, we can prove everything right. through the use of mathematics which is what the scientists use, which what the astronomers use to prove all things. Is that right? And every single day that we wake up, you hear some new discovery, right? Yes. Now they've sent a probe into one of our planets, which is Platoon or Pluto. Now they're trying to see if there's anything beyond Pluto what might exist beyond the realm of that light of our solar system, generating something new in creation outside of our nine planets and the sun.